If you got an older vehicle that shakes as soon as you restart it after it warms up, stay tuned. I'm going to show you how I was able to diagnose this 97 Toyota Tacoma to find out why it shakes after restarting it warm. This truck uses a distributor, so it does not have individual coil on plugs. I've already pulled the trouble code, so let's take a look at that on our fancy scan tool. We're going to go into Data Manager and Vehicle History. And now we can see the historical test. And it looks like we have a Cylinder 1 misfire detected. Cylinder 1 is here, 2, 3, and 4 is over there. So this is going to be pretty easy to get to. Unfortunately, this vehicle does not have individual coil on plugs. It just has the spark plug wires here. But if it did, then what I would have done was swap coils 1 and 2, then take it out for a drive. If the trouble code switches over from cylinder 1 to cylinder 2 misfire, then we know that it's the coil that's bad. In this situation, when the engine was running rough and shaking, I removed the number 1 spark plug wire just to see if there was a difference in how the engine ran. But when I did that, the engine did not change in terms of how it was running, meaning that the spark plug wire was okay. So after I knew that my spark plug wires were okay, I whipped up my handy dandy screwdriver here, got a really nice long one, and I put it right against the fuel injector, just right in there. So that way I can go ahead and just put my ears onto the end of the screwdriver here, and that way I can go ahead and listen just to see if the fuel injector is firing or not. And then after realizing that the fuel injector was not exactly spraying fuel consistently, it was kind of skipping a beat here and there. I kind of messed around with the cable a little bit and then that seemed to have fixed it until I got up and drove the vehicle around a little bit and it eventually started having the same issue over again. I was beginning to suspect that perhaps maybe the wire on the first fuel injector was probably going bad, maybe a bad connection of some sort. I did clean it up but it still had the same problem. So what I did next was I actually took out fuel injectors 1 and 2 and I swapped them both. And after swapping fuel injectors 1 and 2, we now have a PO302 cylinder number 2 misfire detected. The wiring is still good, it's just the fuel injector is bad, so it just needs to go. I'm gonna go ahead and put a drain pan under the vehicle here because the gasoline is going to leak. I'm gonna go ahead and start by removing some of these clips here. And the last two. Just gonna disconnect the connector for the mass airflow sensor. Also going to use a flathead screwdriver here to remove this harness here. There's one here, and there's one on the other side here as well. Undo four of these clips for the airbox. So now we can finally remove this part with a little bit of wiggling, of course. And there we have it. Now we gotta get this metal housing out the way. There are two 12 millimeter bolts down here. They're kinda hard to see, but if you feel for them, you will be able to feel them. Remove this tiny little hose. Pair of pliers, just squeeze this clamp here and just move it aside. I'm just going to slip this hose here right out from this little clip here and it should come right out. Gotta wiggle it a little bit. We have access to the throttle body here. You may as well just clean it up anyway. Got some nice throttle body air intake cleaner here. Just give it a nice spray. And just go ahead and wipe it down as well. You have everything off here already, may as well do this. Just look at all the gunk that came off that throttle body. Just gonna undo this wire over here, just so that way there's more room to move around. Gotta get the fuel rail out, so then there are two 12 millimeter bolts here, one here, and one kind of tucked underneath this harness over here. Not sure if you can see it, but it's down there somewhere. 
Now, since we're messing with the fuel rail here, just be careful because there's going to be a chance of gasoline spilling out now. That's why we got that drain pan underneath. Not much room to get back here with the ratchet, so I'm just going to have to get this off with the wrench. Definitely a tight squeeze back here to get this 12 millimeter bolt out. And out it comes. I also removed the throttle position sensor cable here just to make it a little bit more easier to reach down there. The fuel rail is loose at the moment, so we can just kind of pry up against it. I'm gonna go ahead and take off the throttle body here just to make it easier to lift the fuel rail. So there are four 12 millimeter nuts, one, two, and two more at the bottom. So let's take that out. Gotta take this little hose off first. Wiggle the throttle body out. Watch a couple of the hoses down here. Now would also be a good time to replace this gasket and also clean the inside of the intake housing and the other side of the throttle body too. Just gonna unplug the wires. Definitely kind of hard to film cylinder 3 and cylinder 4's fuel injector, but then they're back there. So I got all four injectors out because I'm switching one of the injectors out. I may as well do all four of them, so that way the engine runs nice and balanced. This one is the one that caused the problem. It was originally from cylinder number one. I swapped them over, so that way I can confirm that the injector is bad. When you're taking out injectors too, make sure that all the gaskets come out, and if they don't, Go ahead and use something like a tool like this to go ahead and fish them out from the engine. I'm still waiting for the new injectors to arrive and once they do, I'll go ahead and upload this video with a second part. And once I get those new injectors installed, we'll go ahead and take this truck out for a road test just to confirm the fix. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. And if you had a vehicle with a misfire issue before and you were able to solve it or not, go ahead and comment down below in the comments section. Thanks for watching.